putting together our joke script from raw material jokes with the practice news headline of Trump trial and Robert De Niro. We're now imagining that we have our raw material, our rough draft of jokes around our topic of interest. Now our focus being to look at all that information, all those rough drafts of jokes that we have spewed onto the page, picking the ones that we think are most effective or that fit into our script best, touching them up so they're better structured and stringing them together in such a way that they possibly tell a narrative or possibly they're just in an order that we think are most effective for a comedy routine. Now note here that we're looking at political jokes. That's the thing that kind of interests me more, but the concept of joke construction and then stringing the jokes together will be similar to any kind of joke construction you're looking at because we're looking at that kind of incongruity for the creation of the joke. So you can see the joke structure, whether it be like a monologue or it be like a stand-up type of routine situation. So I'm mirroring after something like a Greg Gutfield or possibly like a John Stewart where there's kind of a mini narrative, oftentimes many of the jokes being strung together around a uh, particular type of topic. But if you're telling jokes just for laughs, then all you're looking for is the incongruity and you, you'll find that it's amazingly easy if you can construct your setup, which you can often do tightly, to move all over the place. You can tell a joke about this thing over here and then jump all the way over to some topic that's completely different if you just move the setup, which you can do fairly easy, just shoehorn the new setup in place. Also, oftentimes, if you are telling a narrative about a particular topic, you can often shoehorn a joke that has nothing to do with that topic into it by making it just basically part of the narrative, putting it inside of your of your narrative uh, so it fits. You just kind of shoehorn it in there. So we picked the topic of the Trump trial conviction, which again is a political topic. It probably would upset people, you know, uh, taking one side or the other. So people are going to have their opinion about political comedians obviously will depend in part and large part on their political opinions. But remember, the joke, if you don't agree with my opinions, just the joke construction that you put together will be similar and you can use it to whatever purpose that you think would be the best purpose to put it towards. So uh, the idea here is we looked up ChatGTP and I asked ChatGTP to take basically this, this headline, which was the President Trump trial conviction, and then give me a bunch of implicit and explicit assumptions. And those are the assumptions that we make in our head. That's the story that we make. And a joke is just simply shattering that story. So if you just want it, so if you're just doing normal joke construction, you're just going to say, what are the, all the implicit and explicit assumptions? And how can I create a story that will shatter the initial assumption that was put in by the setup? In this case, the setup is simply the headline. Now, if you're talking about political comedy, it gets a little bit more subtle because obviously you have an angle that you're trying to point out some hypocrisy or something like that in a joke structured type of way. So, so clearly that when you break the initial assumptions, you're going to break them in such a way that has kind of a political angle, which hopefully is truthful, but exaggerated. That's kind of the art of satire oftentimes, which is something that I think I find to be interesting but if you're just doing normal slap any kind of comedy just for the laughs you're just trying to get the setup and then break the setup by just making up a story that breaks the setup okay so these are the ones so this is the ones that we had now notice when i built these i tried to say hey look this is the punchline. this is and this is the implicit or explicit assumption if you say president trump was convicted of a felony then one assumption is that he's the president of the country that's what we assume that's the story that we make in our mind you could break that and say well he's not the he's the president of the clowns or something like that which again is breaking the assumption so i didn't really like that one because it doesn't fit into my narrative so i'm going to say eh, i'm not going to use that one this one the next one says uh judicial judgment convicted suggests a legal process that he has uh has concluded meaning 
if we say Trump was convicted of a court uh, in court, we assume that there was a le legitimate legal process. We can just refute that assumption. We can make up a story where that assumption isn't true. Obviously, from a political standpoint, we're, we're basically going to we're going to do it usually in a cynical kind of way and say, well, the court system was a sham. There was corruption or something like that happened in the court case. So you make up the story. The evidence for, for that case is about as reliable as Hillary Clinton gathering up her emails, right, or something like that. About as reliable as trying to check Hillary Clinton's server after it's been whitewashed or something. So, so I'm just trying to make a comparison that would shatter the initial assumption. Now, here, note that I don't really need the setup. So I could just say the Trump trial uh, tr Trump was convicted of 34 counts of blah, blah. And then I don't need to have the setup saying, was it legitimate? I could, I could put someone, another person in the narrative saying that was a legitimate trial. And then I would be, and they're making the implicit assumption explicit. And then I can argue against it, breaking the assumption with the story. You know, the evidence for the fact of the case was as reliable as so on and so forth, but I don't need to, I could go right to the setup being Trump was convicted and then the punch, the evidence for that case is about as ridiculous as Hillary Clinton's blah, 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 right? And then the next one had the setup, felony uh, indicates a serious crime. So if I say he was convicted of 34 counts of felony, Trump is a felon, right? That's basic, that's the setup I can have, right? So, so the implicit assumption is felony is bad, right? And I can break that assumption and the setup could be something as easy in my narrative as going, yeah, Trump is a felon now. Wow. I thought felony was like a real thing at one time. I thought that was like bad or something. Apparently now you can get 34 of them for just miscategorizing like your travel expenses under meals and entertainment. So the incongruity there is saying the assumption is felony is bad. You're making up a story that says this is how felony is not bad in this case. And of course, with political comedy, it's going to be some kind of satire on they're misusing the judge, the legal system. They're now saying that the fel a felony is not what it used to be. But the point at this time is that I don't really need the setup, right? So the question is, what setup do I need? I don't really even need a setup. I can go right in. Trump was convicted of 34 counts of blah, blah, blah. Man, the evidence for that case is about as ridiculous as Hillary Clinton, blah, blah. Wow, I thought a felony was like, fel Trump is a felon now? Wow, I thought a felon was like a bad person at this point. Apparently, you can get 34 felony convictions for miscategorizing your travel expenses as meals and entertainment. That's really, and, that, and then I can add a tag if it's for me as a bookkeeper. I can keep on going. As a bookkeeper, I'm feeling really in trouble at this point in time. That's not, that's, that's, I mean, he paid his lawyer for crying out loud. Y where else am I supposed to put, right? <laughs> where else was I supposed to put it? <laughs> so, and then this one, the, the, the conviction implies a legal system under which the process is, is uh, occurred. So the, the uh, jurisdiction was not valid. So once again, I don't really need that in the setup, but I could try to come up with another setup. So I could string these jokes together and just say, Trump was convicted of 34 accounts, blah, 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 and then go down to here. And, and how is it they sued him for a federal charge in the bluest... And so the setup might be something as quick as, honestly, did they have jurisdiction in this case? Because the assumption is, of course, they had jurisdiction. So you're going to question that implicit, possibly setting up a prompt in your narrative saying, like, did they have jurisdiction? Because, and then making that implicit explicit, which would lead to the, to the next part, which is, you know, how is it they sued him for federal charges and the bluest place in the country where the DAA actually ran a platform on wielding lawfare against one particular person. So now we're basically, this looks more like it's not the funniest joke because it's basically an almost like a legal argument, which has the same kind of structures, which is that you're, this is saying it's true. That's not true. I refute that premise. The premise is wrong. This is why it's wrong but we're trying to put it in an exaggerated format. The more exaggeration you have, the more incongruity, and that's going to lead to the comedy. 
making it more funny, hopefully. So, right, right. And then the conviction implies that a legal process took place according to the law. The due process. So this one has to do with due process. So if we say he was convicted, we assume there's due process. Now, do I have to say that out loud in order to for the setup? I could. I could make the setup nice and easy. Like basically after this joke, how is it they sued him in the bluest state ever? I mean, was there even due process in this case? It seems to me due process in this country has become due due process. So I probably don't even need a setup for that. I don't need to say, is there due process in this country? It's assumed that if, if he was convicted, see, that's what we de We deconstructed the implicit assumption, making it explicit so that we could find the reverse of it so that I can make a story to refute it. But now when I reconstruct it back into a bit, I don't have to really say the implicit assumption because it's assumed, it's implicit. It's already in the person's head as the narrative when you say Trump was convicted of 34 counts. We assume in the United States that we're not a banana republic and he must have gone through due process. So I don't need to say, was there even due process in that? I could just say, wow, he was convicted of 34 counts of felony conviction. Wow, due process in this country has become due due process, right? <laughs> And then you could add, of course, a tag onto that referring to, to Joe Biden or something who's doo-dooing himself. Well, of course, it's doo-doo process. You got a guy, Joe Biden's running the country. And then you can have an image of him, of him doo-dooing doo -doo <laughs> at, the, at, the, at the ceremony. So evidence, evidence was presented that led to the conviction. So that's going to be the implicit assumption, the reverse to that. There was not sufficient evidence. So that led us to this to this bit here or our joke. Wow. Convicting on such skimpy evidence is like executing someone for being a witch because they float in water. So, again, I don't need to then reconstruct this. I deconstructed the implicit assumption to seed my mind to come up with the ref refutation. If I'm stringing it back together. I don't need anything more than the setup. I can string all these together just starting with the blue with very little setup. So I can just say Trump was convicted of 34 counts. I don't need to say, man, was there sufficient evidence for the conviction? I'm trying to keep it tight. I'm trying to keep it, you know, the, the least amount of, of words in there as possible to get the premise that I need to deliver the punch. And the point is that all of these assumptions are implicit in our mind when I say Trump was convicted of 34 counts. So I can just break it without an added setup. Wow, convicting on such skimpy evidence is like executing someone for being a witch because they float in water. Now, that one, if you don't know the reference to like Monty Python, might not be as funny, but still just the comparison of, of every, most people know like the Salem witch trials and whatnot. So most people will still see some incongruity. And again, we can add that sketch here. But now the point I'm pointing at now is that you don't want to have too many words. So I'm just take, I'm taking the, just the heart of the joke that I had to, I had to unfold it, the implicit assumptions to get to the incongruities and now I'm putting it back, I'm folding it back together, only saying what needs to be said without too much added setup. So in other words, the next one here, the president likely had an opportunity to defend himself. So that's going to be the assumption that we make if we say the president was convicted of 34 counts or whatever. So the president had no real chance at justice because of lawfare. That's going to be the reverse of that. I don't need to say that. I don't need to now say, honestly, he was convicted of 34 accounts. The president had no real chance at, at justice because of lawfare. No, I'm going to I'm going to implicitly basically say that with the story. So so I can just go right into Trump was convicted of 34 accounts. The president had no real chance at justice because of law. Because, the, the, wait, that court case was like a trial by combat where they send the guy out to fight 20 lions naked, hands tied behind his back, only able to pathetically wield his small, scared, shriveled, I like meat mace, his meat mace, <laughs> by shaking his hips. So this, notice this one I used some, like a list. 
to, to help to build it. And then I used alliteration meat mace uh, by shaking his hips or in defense. You might put the meat mace at the end, right? So I might say, if I was to read, read tinker with these, these ones, the court case was like a trial by combat where, where they send, you know, send in the guy. We could just say, instead of where they send, I could say sending, 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 sending the guy, sending, sending him out to fight 20 lions, naked, hands tied behind his back. So this is like a list. Only able to pathetically wield his small, scared, shriveled, only, only able to, only able to pathetically wield his small, scared, shriveled meat mace. I don't even think I need this last bit by shaking his hips. I think I got the point across without needing to say shaking his hips. He's only able to, to pathetically wield a small, scared, shriveled meat mace at the beast or something like that. All right, so anyways, because, because I want the, the hit, the joke punchline at the end, and I think meat mace is probably the funniest part of that line. So if I can get that at the end, that's probably where I want to stop that part, is it? So at the next, so then this one I skipped. I was like, that one's not good enough. And so this one, I went down here, implicit proposition or assumption, loss of credibility. The conviction might lead people to doubt the president's integrity uh, or decision-making. So that's what we would assume if he was convicted as a felon on 34 counts, right? So the convict, and then the opposite of that, well, it wouldn't lead to doubt. And then I come up with a story. Now, I don't, so now that I've deconstructed this to come up with my story, I don't need to then say it again when I put this back together in a bit. I can usually skip right down to here because this whole part up here, the premise was gotten from the original line. So if I say Trump was convicted of 34 counts, I don't need another setup. I can go right to the punch here. The conviction led people to doubt the legal system. So we might have a little bit of a setup there. We might say, say uh, the press thinks this is going to, is going to cause people. You would think the press thinks that convicting Trump, the press thinks that Trump having a felis, felony will cause people to doubt him or something like that as the setup to make that implicit assumption more explicit, trying to keep the setup as tight as possible. And then the conviction led people to doubt the legal system, not Trump would be the idea. Honestly, where has justice gone? I don't know about you, but, but you ain't finding it in Manhattan criminal court, that's for sure. So I'm basically just, I won't touch that one up. Impact of the office, if in office the conviction would impact their ability to govern. So the case would not impact Trump's ability to govern. That's the opposite of the assumption. Then you make up the story. If anything, the case would show Trump is not in the pocket of any of these corrupt blah, 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 blah. So let me just show that if I read these and I skip the premises, I, I skip the implicit assumption and I have very small premises, I can basically go right to the punch and then string these together, trying to be as efficient with my words as possible to get as many punches or points, if you want to think of it from an argumentative standpoint, as possible. Now, again, this sounds a lot like a political comedy, which, again, if you don't agree with the premises, would be you might not think that is effective. It sounds like an argument to you, right? That's going to be the kind of the, the part, the hard part about satire. But uh, if you did the same thing, you could do the same thing with limited setups. Trim your setup down to as little as you need to break the premise. You don't need to make every implicit assumption that we have broken out here explicit. That defeats the point. The implicit assumption is given by the setup and you're breaking the story that they put in their head because they're supposed to say, oh, I thought this was going to happen. And then you revealed why what I thought was the story is not the story with the other information. You don't need to tell them exactly what story should be in their head because the point is that we always make up stories in our mind with all kinds of implicit assumptions, right? All right.
So, so if I just read this, like Trump was convicted of 34 counts of felony, and then I just went through each of these and I just strung these together that I put the blue bit by. So the evidence for, for the case is about as, as, as reliable as Hillary Clinton gathering up her emails. Wow. I thought, I thought a felony was like bad or something. Apparently now you can get 34 of them for miscalculating your travel expenses under meals and entertainment. That's not good for me as a bookkeeper. I feel like I'm a little worried over here, tell you the truth. I just added that one in. And then this, how is it they sued him for the federal charge in the bluest place in the country where the DA actually ran on a platform on wielding lawfare against one particular man? I could probably reword that better, but in any case, go into the next one. Wow, due process in this country, and, and I might change the wow because I already used that. I might go, honestly, due process in this country has become doo-doo process. Nothing about this process of the case look normal. And then this one, wow, convicting on such, I might do honestly again or some another kind of filler word to set up the, the next bit just to go to the, Convicting on such skimpy evidence is like executing someone for being a witch because they float in water. The president, th that court case was like a trial by combat, sending a man out to fight 20 lions naked, hands tied behind his back, only able to pathetically wield a small, scared, shriveled meat mace. And then this one, the conviction led people to doubt the legal system. Honestly, so that one might need a little bit of a setup. They think it's going to lead people to doubt Trump for being a felon. But I think that the conviction will lead people to doubt the legal fix system. Honestly, where's the justice gone? I don't know, but it, you ain't finding it in the Manhattan criminal court. So if anything, the case would show Trump is not in the pocket of any of these corrupt political countries, unlike most of these bribe taking, pandering, dog faced pony soldiers, sons of trout. And then so there would not be be public interest and so on. So I'm just trying to point out that you can string these together with minimal prompts now. And so now the point is to try to tighten up the jokes, try to find the ones that you think would string together in a story the best. Notice also that any of these, it's kind of like a periodic sentence uh, in that you can kind of put these as a second layer. I kind of I've been looking at courses on sentence structure, which is actually a pretty interesting. <laughs> I, I've been looking up, but in any case, you, you can kind of put these in any second layer. So they're kind of second layers. If you think of it as similar to a periodic sentence, meaning you, you can you can interchange any of these. I could have started with this one. Donald Trump was convicted of let's start with Donald Trump was convicted of of 34 counts of felony. I might start with this one because I thought this one was the most graphically image wise funny. So then I might start with, wow, due process in this country has become doo doo process. So I think that leads off pretty well right there and has a pretty strong pictorial case and then go into the next one, which might be something like this one. How is it? And maybe duh, 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 and then start. What was the next one? And then go to this one i thought what might be the second most i thought a felony was like a real thing but apparently you can get 34 of them for miscalculating or miscategorizing your travel expenses under meals and entertainment and as a bookkeeper the next one to me that would be most funny i think would be man that's that's not good for me as a bookkeeper i'm starting to get a little bit worried here and then you know we can build and then and then maybe i can keep on ordering these in the way that I think is most effective, noting that I can interchange them almost interchangeably. I can put either one of them in any position because all of these jokes were brought from the same premise, having implicit and explicit assumptions directly from the headline. Now, if you had jokes that came in from different premises, meaning different headlines, or you had different things starting the jokes, you can usually kind of shoehorn them in to to uh, the to a narrative story that you want to create. Or if you just say, hey, I just want to pick my funniest jokes and put them in order to get my top bit here, then you can usually, again, set the prim. You can come up to your setups that are as small and tight as possible to then just deliver, you know, your alternative narrative, which, again, is as small and tight as possible with the with the 
end of the joke on the end. Now, now I put these together. Notice that I also made my resources uh, over here, which are the which are the images that the AI images that we put together, and then uh, and and then the video clips that we put together. So and. As I construct my jokes, I can then use that to see if the AI images make it so it might be more funny just because of the images and then use that to construct my jokes. Now here's a script that I kind of put together over here. This one's not exactly on the same same topic, but it's similar. So I used a little bit different of a system, so I'm not using the exact same thing, but just to get an idea of how I might write this down so that I can then read it and then put everything together. So now at this point in time, I'm imagining that that I have my jokes that I want to put together, and then maybe I already have my images and my video clips or some ideas for them, or I often do it in reverse order. I, I basically take my raw material as if I'm a stand-up comedian. I write it as best I can. Then I write it out before I look up the AI and the video clips so that I don't waste time looking up AI and video clips for things that I'm not gonna actually use. But again, sometimes you might wanna look those up first because they might lead you, prompt your mind for more material or say you, you wanna pick something because it has a good image related to it. So then I would usually write the script and when I write the script, I'm, I'm going to basically uh, change lines. Notice I don't write it in one long paragraph even if I was going to do the full thing first person because reading a script from one long line is not easy to do and if you use line breaks I think Winston Churchill actually did this in his speeches he basically did line breaks where he's going to put pauses in his speech kind of like you're writing a poem but you're just doing it with prose that also gives a nice space for you to put other prompts in your in your text which can refer back to images that you want to to put in place or uh, video clips. It also gives you a nice place for a pause, which something like a meme or video clip would fit beautifully. So, so, so that's the way I would suggest writing them, even if you're doing the whole thing first person. So the next thing you might look at is to try to say, do I want to, to write my narrative all first person or do I want to write my narrative so that I'm going to be switching POVs or point of views, you know, from first person to th third person or whatever. And so, and so that's, and so I'm going to go into other people's heads in a similar way. If you've read novels, I think Brandon Sam Sanderson's novels, whoever he has to read those novels, they, they often do this where they, where they switch the guy's voice to the lady's voice or whoever's voice when they move to a different character that it seems to me, works quite well with jokes as well so you can kind of switch your your whole point of view so the question would be do i want to write my it just depends what kind of jokes you're doing if you're writing just a, a setup and a punch then oftentimes you might not need that because you're just writing a setup and a punch in first person that you can deliver possibly but if you're staging a little narrative a little story oftentimes you're going to be talking to someone and any time that you're that you're kind of referencing someone else you could try to put them in first person which seems difficult at first but especially if you're online and you have the ability to then add images to say hey look now this person's talking versus that person we might talk more about that in the editing it might be something to experiment with which i've been experimenting a little bit more with over here also realize that if you're talking about a narrative construction, then then you're you're going to have possibly more setup lines, uh, more material that's not just there to deliver a laugh. So you're going to get less jokes per minute if you want to measure it that way. But you're going to get the narrative structure, which might be more of interest to you as it is to me. I like to watch the jokes that actually have some kind of point to it. I like the satire jokes and whatnot. Uh, more although just the funny jokes are funny I like as well but that's going to be the idea you know building up the jokes is kind of like those ladies that build up their only fan pages you know if you build it they will come the old saying applies just like if we build our jokes here if we build up our jokes then they will 
laugh, hopefully, until they get bored. Then they'll probably go visit the OnlyFans page and do something else or something. That's the idea here. Anyway, sidetracking. So, so now we're gonna. So now we're going to. We have our 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 joke structure here. Now, in my case, I I used the Trump trial in this one, but the other thing that I saw was when when uh, Robert De Niro was talking just before the conviction. I think it was the day before the conviction. If I get this wrong, I apologize. Or you know, but I think it was like right before the conviction. Robert De Niro was talking about the efficacy of the trial or whatnot, and that that he deserved to be convicted and this and that, which I thought was funny. So that to me. I thought was really funny, not because Robert De Niro is a bad, I don't know him personally, or obviously I don't really follow actors that much or anything. He, he probably is a, a nice person or whatever, but usually when you put an actor out there to talk about something, they used to put like Doogie Hazard out there. Doogie Hazard, Hazard, Hazard. He was like the child doctor to like, I can imagine them putting like, if there was a, a child doctor, like the Doogie Hauser thing, to try to promote the eff- efficacy of the COVID vaccine, not because Doogie as a person is actually a good person, but because he played a genius doctor, right? That's what they usually do. And so, and and here I thought it was funny because they, they had a court case that looks to a lot of people like it was corrupt. And they put someone who played a mafia person out there or he went out there or whatever happened. I just thought it was kind of funny because, and again, Robert De Niro's played a lot of things, but I think the, the rules that made him was a mobster like Heat or the movie Heat or the movie like uh, the, the what well, I'm drawing a blank here. Was it Goodfellas and Casino, right? If he didn't play in those movies, you know, he wouldn't be, <laughs> I don't think he would be famous. So I think that's what comes to my mind when I hear the name Robert De Niro. So, and obviously the mobsters are not famous for legitimate legal processes. So I just saw the just position of saying, of trying to argue that the, the, the legal process is working as it should by putting someone who plays, you know, like a ruthless mobster that clearly tries to corrupt the legal system <laughs> was kind of a funny just position, incongruity just in and of itself. So then I tried to put like a, a narrative together based on that in my general idea was basically uh car i was trying to say like karma uh the the idea the other idea i had in place that i wrote a joke about had to do with karma where where someone was talking about you know car i think karma and the the idea of humbleness are often used in a similar way they're used in a way it's, it's really schadenfreude meaning you're happy that someone else has been taken down or something, you're getting joy out of someone else's pain or something like that. That's usually how people use karma, right? So I kind of thought that having like the, 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 the president saying, oh no, I, yeah, I'm politically benefiting from this, but you don't understand, I'm just receiving good karma from my cost. It's just a co- it's not political corruption that I'm benefiting from. It's just karma that's that's accruing to me in a positive way because of my. I thought that incongruity, which is similar to the concept of, of, uh, oh, he's been humbled, right? As if as if you're not just doing Schadenfreude, right? Oh, that person's been humbled, as it, you know, and, and there, it's the same kind of thing, right? There, you're really saying I'm really happy that that guy got kicked. <laughs> kick his knees kicked out from under him, right? He's, he's been humbled, right? As, and, and again, you could use those karma and, and humbled well, but again, I think they're often used from a standpoint of schadenfreude, which I thought was, uh, was part of the bit that I put together here. So here's what I put together on it. Dude, that court case was a total sham. The legal system wielded like a weapon to attack the presidential political rival. Now, I could have just said, you know, the, the Donald Trump was convicted of 34 counts and just had that as the setup. So maybe this setup is too long. I might have said I could have maybe trimmed down some of those words. Who would have thought that we, we'd see the sad banana republic day in America? So now I try to just put it as tightly as possible. Sad banana republic day uh, in America. That's basically this whole bit is kind of the setup telling you, you know, my angle on, on it, my particular opinion. And then I tried to put in the just position of Joe Biden, which I'm now writing. And just from a script standpoint, I'm starting a new line and then I'm going to color his stuff in in red. And I've got a little 
you could make a little key for it if you have a lot of different people. So I put down here red, that's going to be Joe Biden, right? So I'm going to go. And so now I switched my voice over to, to Joe Biden. No, you don't understand. Now I have some ideas for some movie clips over here. I'll get into them later, but I'm just going to do line by line. You don't understand. Pause his next line. It's not political. It's not political. So obviously I'm trying to give the just position of saying, and I'm trying to indicate this with his face that I can imagine pictorially because, and then, which is like, it's not politics. I'm telling you, this isn't political at all. It's totally, so I'm not political in any way. You, you think I'm kidding, but no, I'm serious. Now this isn't really a joke construction down here, but he says that all the time. So you could probably get a clip of him saying, no, you think I'm kidding, but I'm serious. When he's saying nonsense, like uh, when he's lying, he lies all the time. He honestly he lies like just factually all the time. So you could come up with a joke of saying, you know, you could find clips of him saying, you know, you think I'm joking, but no, I'm serious. And then back to first person. So aren't you the one who set the wheels in motion, stoked the corrupt legal flames, and who stands to politically benefit from jailing the second most likely person to remove you from office democratically? The first most likely person being, of course, death. So obviously, second most likely kind of a setup because you would think that Trump would be the first most likely since he's the current political rival uh, for the election. But the first most likely is clearly death because Biden's on his deathbed. So and then I didn't want that to sound like a threat as if like Trump's going to kill him, right, or something like that. So I, I, that's why I added death by self-imposed ice cream induced brain freeze. And I thought that is an image. When I write my script, I'm thinking I didn't actually make an AI image for that, but I can imagine I can probably make a funny AI image of someone eating an ice cream cone and having their brain freeze or something like that. So even if that's not exactly funny, I could probably add, I'm thinking I can add something to it image wise that would make it more funny and it'll help me narrative wise. Then I'm going back to red, which is jumping to Biden again. Well, of course that's true. But honestly, all I ever do is follow my conscience. Little Jiminy Cricket leading me to make the most morally correct decision every time. So the just position here, no, it's just karma. I'm not, I'm benefiting not because of, because of politics and, and my corruption. It's because of karma. And that's the argument that I'm trying to put the just position to, which again, I think I can put a funny image and I also have some clips in mind for Jiminy Cricket and him looking on his shoulder for, for the, good, the good person versus the bad angel and so on, which sometimes just happens to benefit me politically. And I can understand how that might look suspicious, but I'm actually not benefiting from political corruption, but rather I'm just receiving good karma, cosmic justice, the cosmos rewarding me for 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 following my good little Jiminy Cricket conscience. So the argument here, it's karma. He, the, the other guy was just humbled. He was humbled. I humbled him like with my holy justice hand. <laughs> it's like, okay, I think that's Schadenfreude. I don't think, I, don't, <laughs> I think you're better. Right? And then it's like, that's, that's what's really happened. It's you who are actually corrupt, trying to distort my beautiful cosmic justice rewards for my good deeds into looking like it's actually some kind of ugly, self-empowered, dirty politics. Now that's kind of long, kind of wordy, and I'm telling more of a story here than, than possibly a setup and a punchline. But to me, I think it, the narrative still kind of works together because I'm, I'm trying to put the just positions and the imagery I think will help with the story setup. And so then this bit, uh, honestly, there's no excuse for your ignorance. Not after we helpfully had Robert De Niro, known for playing a ruthless gangster with no respect for the law out in front of the courthouse just before the verdict, which we just happened to know was coming the next day. Explain how the complex workings of the legal system are fully intact, administering justice and only justice. So now this is the setup, and I set this up possibly more than you needed to, to say who Robert De Niro was, 
because I'm going to I'm going to use AI images of a gangster rather than Robert De Niro himself <laughs> to, to represent the person talking in front of uh, the or you know the, the the courthouse. So I'll use AI images of a gangster because it says it's a ruthless gangster here and for just before which which we just happen to know which sounds which i'm trying to you know give some implication that sounds a little funny how did you know the verdict was happening do you have some some inside knowledge on that one i don't anyways so then we're going to the next bit that i'm trying to then say i'm going to try to go into the mind or into the head of the gangster uh that that's in front of the courthouse telling us that the legal system is intact and so i'll use my gangster voice on that one my mafia voice now i'm in california mafia thing isn't a big thing over here but i watched all these mafia movies so i try to get i try to get into the into the the thing of it right so so look look it's nothing personal it's nothing political it's just business i mean i mean justice and that's a famous line in these movies which might go over the head or under the head or might miss many younger people maybe people aren't into these movies anymore <laughs> but they were big movies when like i was growing up so and everybody knew the line it's just business the mafia the, the mafia line it's just business but it's supposed to be about justice here you know it's you're not supposed to be not supposed to be paying off the legal system so you can make like corrupt political money here uh we're supposed to be the system's supposed to work so the legal system is working perfectly. The Biden campaign just greased the wheels a little, you know, in the right places with the proper positive and sometimes unfortunately negative incentives. And the verdict, it just happened to work out in their favor. So I'm trying to basically word the script so it might lend itself to some kind of uh, narrative that might be more like a mobster narrative, a little bit of broken English, a little bit, you know. And so, so then... It worked out in their favor. That's how the legal system is designed to work, people. Honestly, haven't you seen The Godfather? And that one I had not looked up The Godfather yet, but I have this idea. I'm, I've got all these movie images. These were popular movies when I was growing up. The Godfather, where he says, basically, you know, presidents don't kill people. He's like, well, who is, who's being naive now? Or so on. <laughs> so I, so I thought that one would fit. And then Biden, back to Biden. Oh, if you can't even trust Robert De Niro, mafia movie man, explaining to you that the justice system is in good working order, defending justice, you're the one with the problem. Okay, and given, given the legal system works, it could be a fatal one. So going back to, to, to and, and I had an image of, of the couple clips that can work on that, back to first person. Honestly, I think this entire thing looks like a corrupt political third world banana republic sham. No, back to Biden. I told you it's karma. I'm just benefiting from good karma. And then back to the gangster. So now the gangster's jumping in, which this looks somewhat chaotic. But if you put it together, you can go from one person to the other with images, which make it somewhat easy to do. Yeah, I'd, I'd sure hate it if karma decided to whack that guy. I'm just saying, if karma happened to whack that guy, karma would probably reward the whacker. So he's strongly implying, because obviously the, these, the, the Italians used to be infamous for basically not actually saying that they're going to kill anyone or commit a crime, but they strongly incent, you know, kind of in, imply it, and then someone just happened to do it for them somehow. But it wasn't their fault because they just how would they know that if they so then and so then i'm doing the rocky balboa character but um, he's going to be karma so that's where the yellow is i'll do it boss should i whack him or just break his thumbs boss and so then we're back to the to the boss here so no not you karma having a dude actually named karma do the whacking th that we plan to blame on cosmic karma it's just a little too on the nose, even for us. So now some guy, some Italian guy actually named Karma is going to do the whacking that was strongly implied that wanted to happen by the boss person. But then, but the boss person's like, dude, your name is actually Karma Karma. And we're trying to blame the whacking on like cosmic karma. It's too on the nose. So then he's like, but I, but I appreciate your passione. So I get to try to use my, my Spanglish italian english 
karma. But but if if you happen to know anyone else, karma, somebody not named karma, then you know, ask if he wants to do that thing for us. So there's another kind of famous line in there where it's like, did you do that thing for us? I got that thing done for you, boss, where they're always strongly implying that they killed someone or cut someone's fingers off or broke their thumbs or something. And then so, and I'm and I'm sure karma will reward him. Again, not you karma, but cosmic karma. We'll give him a cash reward according to the contract drawn out in a cocktail napkin. So obviously, most of the times these deals of whackings and whatnot aren't aren't going to be on a formal contract. It'll be on an informal contract drawn out in a bar and a cocktail napkin or something that he's going to get rewarded for the whacking. Just like like Jabba the Hut has the deals like in his little basement there or something. However, remember the big guy, he gets 10% and an ice cream cone. So I had to refer to a 10% thing because apparently Joe Biden likes to 10 percent the number that he collects on the crazy stuff. So honestly, so back to first person Phil. So it really feels like the judge is a little biased here, wielding, uh, to, willing to look the other way in corruption in a fairly predictable pattern. For some strange reason, I just don't trust these guys. I'm telling you, the crap's about to hit the fan, Phil. And then I went to Phil. So Phil's in orange. How do you know? How do I know the crap's going to hit the fan? Because I'm about to throw the crap at the fan, Phil. That's how I know, because I'm about to throw the freaking crap at the freaking fan. So I like the Fs here. So I didn't really like swearing all the time, but... The freaking crap at the freaking fan man with some alliteration. I just thought that sounded nice. And so not really, though. But seriously, Biden clearly desperately wants to hold on to power like he's like he's quickly going downhill. And you know how the old saying goes, Phil, when the going gets tough. Now, this is another one that I just kind of shoehorned another joke in there that I had with regards to the going gets tough, meaning the going gets tough. The tough gets something else. So now I'm just going to change the meaning of those words. So when the going gets tough, the tough needs to get the goings creepy, power hungry, corrupt old hands off them before the dude that's going throws the tough in jail. So when the going gets tough, I've basically just named that the person that's going is Biden. He's going out of office and probably dying. And then the tough is Trump, right? So when the going gets tough, then when the going gets tough, then the tough needs to get the going's creepy, power-hungry, corrupt old hands off him before the dude that's going, Biden, throws the tough, Trump, in jail. And I can see that with images. Now, that, that might not be clear just from verbal language, but I think it's fairly clear. And if I put it in an image, it'll be more clear. Or worse, the going using the massive built-up down here momentum drags the tough and the country with him down into the ground. Now, once I have the script, then I would probably go back into it and, and then I might add my AI images and my, my uh, movie clips and I colored them this way. I might have reversed the colors from the last one I did, but then I, but then I probably have some of them there already had in mind and some of them I can look up later. So this one, I, I found Johnny English, uh, which is actually a... Uh, a movie that I had on like Amazon. So I already had that one. So I can possibly look it up on the YouTubes, but I had that one. So I might be able to, when I'm editing it, add that. So I just referenced the number of it so I can probably add it. And the reason this one was funny is, be is because I thought Johnny English was like clearly lying about something. And it ended up that he, that he was blaming some other person for his problem. And then he, he, the other person ended up, the, the sketch kind of looked like Donald Trump in that at least it had red hair. So I thought that was a kind of funny, funny bit where it's kind of mirroring what Biden is doing here saying, no, it's not me. I'm not the corrupt one. It's the other guy. That's the corrupt one. And so, and then he draws, who's the corrupt guy? Oh, it's the, oh, it's the orange, the guy with the orange hairs did it. <laughs> so, and then, and then this one are the images the images that I had here. So I, I picked up the images and I looked these up in uh, the chat GTP. So I was looking up the corrupt uh, court case and I looked up like a sledgehammer and I might see how I put these together in future presentations. So I said 16 
120 with 100. So I've said 120 is this one uh, with 100 So and this one. So I put this 120 here, which looks like a, so I, I downloaded these from AI and I've sorted them, I numbered them, and I can put this image where he's looking like a very stern judge and he's wielding a gavel that looks like a war hammer, trying to give an indication that looked like he's kind of misusing his gavel here a little bit. It's a little too heavy, as was my indication that I was trying to do. So who would have thought uh, we'd see the sad Banana Republic day? So then I listed Biden and 130. So if I go over here, I can say, here's my politicians. So I can't really make AI images of the politicians, but I can find images of Biden out there, of course. And so I can find an image of Biden over here and then possibly put that on uh, the, the 130. That was my banana republic. So I looked up uh, an American flag and bananas and, it be, and that's what it came up with. So I was like, yeah, that's not bad. And so then, so let me close this one here. And I'll save that. And so then we had, uh, and so then I continued with the Johnny English. So I think I can continue that little skit with Johnny English through these two, two pieces. And then he says, no, you don't understand. So now I'm going to use a Biden face, which is probably going to be, uh, which is probably going to be this one where he looks the most clueless. No, there's probably some better new ones. This one's actually pretty old. He looks more clueless these days, but no, you don't understand. And then we can go back and then I'm going to continue with Johnny English. It's not political. It's not political. So you can look him. He's looking clueless saying, you don't get it. It's not schadenfreude. I'm, I'm not political. And then you could possibly find a clip of him saying, you think I'm kidding. But I also thought I also had uh, another clip or images 1000, 1000, uh, hold on a second. I had, oh, I thought, I thought these clips worked good. So 1000. So I, I, now I downloaded these clips if I was going to find them from a resource where I'm downloading them. So this is from Casablanca. And so I just looked up, uh, a key phrase to find these. Now, this is a classic scene that basically is is showing hypocrisy, right? So this guy's closing him up for gambling when he obviously was just gambling. And now he's collecting his winning. I think that kind of refers to the corruption thing where Biden is collecting like, you know, he's got a case where he's collecting 10, looks like he's collecting 10% of his son's corrupt dealings or whatnot. There's a famous tweet out there. So I thought that that might fit in here. So I saved it and then I labeled it with a different color as the images. So the images are going to be red. And then these uh, clips are going to be green that I can so I can then record this and then lay the images basically on top. But no, I'm serious. So I can put an image of Biden. And then Biden saying, you think I'm kidding. So I can find a clip of that while I'm going. So aren't you the one who set up the wheels in motion, stoked the corrupt legal flames and who stands to politically benefit? So then I found uh, 140 and 150. So as we go through that, I can say here's 140. So this is a thing of when I was doing this when I was doing guitar intros. So now I'm, I'm have my guitar thing on stage and I'm pointing. And so 140 and then 150, I said, set the wheels in motion. So I said, give me wheels rolling down a hill. And so this one, I thought that was kind of uh, that one looked pretty good. So aren't you the one that set the, the wheels in motion? And then 170 with, with Biden and then 180 and 190. So then 170. So I said, then I wanted a fire because now he set the fire. And then I could put a picture of Biden with this stoking the flames. So now I'm saying, here's a picture of, of the fire. Then I can put a picture of Biden with this thing and his hands stoking the fire was was what I was imagining, which I'm trying to indicate just with this script. So now this one's a little bit long here. I could have possibly broke this into a couple lines so that I don't have to put these images one by one. But I'm saying 140 is me saying and then 150. Now, notice I'm putting a lot of images in here because I'm telling the story 
uh, without me on camera. So I can imagine myself as a character, but I don't want any image on the screen too long because I want it to look more like a movie. And if I do that just with images, I've got to switch my images fairly quickly so that there's some animation, possibly move them around the screen, turn them around, put a behavior on them or something like that. So I go from this image to this image to Biden to them, the fire because he's stoking the flames and so on. So the first person, the, the first person, likely person being, of course, death. So then I found a picture of death or I made a picture of death, which is going to be uh, this one. So I just got that from uh, AI images and the death death by self-imposed ice cream brain freeze. So now I can have a picture of Biden uh, eating ice cream. So there's a bunch of pictures, of course, of Biden that you can't really get from AI anymore. You used to be able to get them from AI. So I got like these, some of these from AI before they before they restricted us from doing that. Here's some on Donald Trump. I was he, I had a story about a donut. So he was a, like a donut. And then I made him because there was the Stormy Daniels case. So I made him Horse face, or oh, I made him horse faced, Stormy Daniels because, because uh, they were talking about uh, uh, so I don't I don't remember, but so I have to. Admit, they don't let you do that anymore. That was the good old Wild West days. So so well, of course that's true. And then I have Biden, and then two ten. So now I've got two ten. I could put a picture of Biden, and then two ten because he's col he's a mobster. I'm tying him in with the mobster collecting his ten his 10% over here. And then, but honestly, all, all I've ever do is follow my conscience. Little Jiminy Cricket leading me to make the best morally correct po decision possible. So 220, 230 with Biden's face. So I could say, all right, here's 220. So here's Jiminy Cricket. They won't let me do actual Jiminy Cricket, but you can make an AI image similar. Here's 230 where he's looking at the angel and the devil and then I can put Biden's face on top here. So, so you have the clueless looking Biden, right? Looking like this. So I can put this Biden face on it. So he's like, oh, and then, <laughs> and then the angels are on his shoulder, right? That is what I was thought that might be a funny image. So then, so then I had this one, cat in boots. Uh, so this was a, a whole thing with cat in boots that, that where he, he's talking to Jiminy Cricket on his shoulder. And clearly, Jiminy Cricket's not going to convince the guy to do anything good, right? which was a funny skit, which I think I then added as a running theme on this one because I thought it worked well. So which sometimes just happens to benefit me. So 190, 120, 190, 120, 190, I put this one. So then I was going to say, put this one. It just happens to benefit me. So now he's ruling the world with Biden's clueless head on top of this thing that's on top of the world. I don't know what happened. It just, ha it just happened to work in my favor. The court case just happened. And I, and I can understand how that might look suspicious. So, and then I put these two clips. This was 1020. So the clips were 1020. So here's the classic one where it might look like there's a problem, but there's nothing to see here. So that's the classic scene where he's he's trying to disperse people. Nothing to see here when clearly there's fireworks. And then I had this one. I just looked up, does it look suspicious or this mm. looks suspicious? And so Homer Simpson sees a, <laughs> someone taped it, free dough that's on the treehouse. And then he's like, that looks suspicious. This looks suspicious. So I thought that might be something that I could fit, you know, in between those two lines but but i'm actually not benefiting from the political corruption so i had 1040 on that one that i looked up and said okay 1040 is this one it's not what you think so i was looking up it's not what you think i i didn't do it it's not what you think or something like that and so i didn't have this clip in mind i just looked up a key phrase that would be similar to this it's i'm not actually benefiting it's not me it's not what you think it's not what it looks like any of those phrases, if you if you search on our search engines, you'll probably find something for that. But but rather, I'm just receiving good karma from this and so on and so forth. 1050 is what I found for that one. 
So I have uh, 1050, another Simpsons, of course, always classic lines. Hey, it's called karma. It's called karma. And then the second bit on that one. Isn't karma where if you do something bad... And then that ends at something like this. Bad things happen to you? Bad things hey. happen to you. And then he's like... A common misconception. As he throws the can into the, <laughs> into the water. So I thought, and I broke that one up in the script. So it's not all in one line. So it doesn't break up my script as much. And so I don't run into copyright issues, hopefully. And so that, so that then... It works kind of like as a call bait. There's almost a running gag within the script. So you don't want to go too far with that, but I kind of like that, uh, actually. And then the 250 uh, is is the image that I had over here of uh, 250 that he was a, he's looking suspicious. That's why I added that one that might work as I go through it. So it's you who are actually corrupt, trying to distort my beautiful cosmic and so on and so forth. And so I used... Uh, the, the 260 with Biden's head and then 270. So 260. So 260. I was going to pick this one, some an old man pointing and then put Biden's ha head on it. And then I was going to pick uh, 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 260, 270 and then 120 and 110. So 120 was this one and then put 110 on it. That's the political system. Again, this guy with the hammer that looks like a war hammer that's supposed to be a gavel. And then I was going to add the, the movie clip of the cat in boots where I found all the scenes where little Jiminy Cricket's on the shoulder and the guy keeps on doing horrible things and not listening to Jiminy Cricket at all. <laughs> so honestly, there's no excuse for your ignorance. Not after we helpfully had Robert De Niro known for playing a gangster and so on. So once again, I put the cat in boots after that bit. This bit's probably too long. I could have broke this out into a couple different lines. But then I had the, the images. I looked up the images of 260 this time. So back to the firing, the fire, and he's stoking the flames. So this is a longer script for me. And notice if it's a longer script, you can often go back to the same images uh, and you might want to have multiple iterations of the same image. So notice I have two images of fire here. So I can use different ones that have the same thing, but might be more interesting because I've had AI give me a couple different images. Then down to the gangster. Look, it's nothing personal. It's just political. It's just business. So I found the 1060 area for clips related to that because I have these gangster clips in my mind where he says it's nothing biz it's nothing personal here's the famous it's not line personal, Sonny. it's strictly business now that's not robert de niro but it's just the idea of these of a gangster it's the same genre impossible and, to trace and then i put so that there just so you can mind. indicate obviously that he's not on justice's side here <laughs> or he's well, not or he's doing his own justice at, 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 at least right is is it's clearly not he's basically saying the legal system is not just so we're going to do our own thing is the is the gist of the of the movie so that's the in, which is just positioned to someone who actually believes the justice system is going to work the way it's supposed to right so the legal system the, uh so then i had uh 280 and 120 uh 280 on my images so i said i numbered these uh 280 uh so i found these images of the legal system where, again, he's wielding the hammer. So this is a similar idea of this one, the judge wielding a hammer. But this time I said, I want more of those because I keep coming back to this theme where the legal system is being used corruptly like a war hammer as opposed to dispensing justice. So this guy doesn't look to me like he's a judge dispensing justice. He's looked like an executioner that's been given orders and is now following through with the orders right so then and so then the biden campaign is is just greasing the wheels a little bit so then i found another kind of gangster lines uh 1070 so 1070 doo -doo -doo, and so we can go okay here's the 1070 he's just persuading some people you know another letter from that school goes to that kid's house and so here's little little persuasion it's just part of the legal system. 
So that that's you know a classic line from uh, Good Goodfellas, I think that one is it. So then again, that's kind of saying it doesn't look like this looks like the legitimate way the law is supposed to work. Yeah, I don't know. That's how that's how the legal system is designed to work. And then I had two eighty three ten. So let's say two eighty. So now I've got he's he's the one talking the gainster. And then three ten. Uh, three ten. I had all these images of gangster. He was greasing the wheels. So I found an image of him gre of greasing the wheels. And then the three ten. Uh, here I found all of these images like of of a gangster looking boss person is what I looked up, and that's what they're giving me there. And I had the justice system at ten percent, uh, with the justice ten percent indicating like a bribe rather than justice. Right? Is it kind of the idea? So that's not how the legal system... Honestly, haven't you seen the, the Godfather? And so there's a classic line in The Godfather, which I already knew, so I can look it up on YouTube, where he says, senators and presidents don't kill people. And then the, and then the, the, the mafia guy's like, oh, now who's kidding who, you naive person? And then 330 is another mobster image is saying that. So if you can't even trust Robert De Niro, mafia man... So I used the movie clip from the cat on the shoulder because Biden's talking again and he's not listening to his conscience is what I'm indicating. And then Biden, 330, uh, 290, and 260. So I was going to say, all right, 330. Another here, gangster, 290, 290. Uh, I, and I was doing, oh, 290 was another one of these. And cosmic, I was trying to say cosmic karma. I got a picture of the cosmos to indicate cosmic karma. Honestly, I think this entire thing looks corrupt political. Uh, so I got banana republic. So I got the banana republic thing again with the flags with the banana. No, I told you it's karma and I'm just benefiting from karma. So another cats on boots line, 230 uh, with Biden head and 240. So 230 is 230 is here where did 230 go oh this one with biden's head i'm just benefiting from karma uh and and he's that's gonna no i told you it's karma so this was 230 and then back to the gangster yeah i'd sure hate it if karma decided to whack that guy so now i've got a uh, 250 and 270 so we can say okay 250 i put that here uh, and 270 is karma. I think I was trying to indicate one of these gangster people talking. I'm just saying if karma whacked that guy, karma would probably reward him. 320 is an image of a gangster. I'll do it, boss. So now I've got a rock. That's a rocky line where he says, should I break his thumbs? So it's another kind of a same genre, Italian kind of, you know, tough guy mobster thing. So here's a guy that I just told ChatGTP to give me a mobster, kind of like Rocky Balboa. Rocky's going to break his thumbs because that, that's what they told him to do. So Rocky's, so, <laughs> so then I got to think, so then he's, and so that's going to be that one. And I got the line in Rocky where he's, where the, the mobster's chewing him out for not following his orders to break the guy's thumbs. And when I tell you to break his thumbs, you break his thumbs. And then, no, not you, karma. So this is 320, the mobster again. But I appreciate your passione, 330. So notice I have multiple images now of like a mobster if I'm going to have him be talking. Because even though these images aren't the same person, I, I generated them from a similar prompt. So these are, are not all the same. This one, this one, this one, and then, and then these mobsters up here. But I'm going to indicate him as the same person, and I think people will get the general idea while also having a different image so it doesn't get as stale with just one image on the screen. But I appreciate your path. But, it, but if you happen to know anybody else, Karma, somebody not named Karma, so the mobster again, ask him if he wants to do that thing for us, mobsters again, and I'll sure, I'm sure Karma will reward him. So, so again, I have multiple images of both the boss karma and the rocky kind of hitman guy over here and so then 
Same thing here. Uh, did, did, again, karma is to have cash reward. So there, this was a line from Goodfellas where he says, I did that thing for you. And his name was Pete the Killer or something like that. So I think it's strong, you'll strongly implying that the thing was killing someone. However, remember the big guy gets 10%. And then here's, I put, and an ice cream cone. So here you could put Biden with an image of an ice cream cone. And then, and then honestly, Phil, is, Phil and 10% is, you can put an image, I put an image of the scale of justice with cash on one side and 10% on the other. <laughs> and so I thought that, so then, so honestly, Phil, it really feels like the judge is a little biased. So I put uh, uh, Phil here, and I'm not sure what the script was. And then Phil is the person I'm talking to. Phil is my is my uh, somewhat woke producer character. For some strange reason, I just don't trust these guys. And then I found an image of somebody looking distru- looking like he doesn't trust somebody. Da-da. Where was that one? This one. So he's looking like, uh, is this is this that looks not right? And so I thought that image looked pretty good. AI is pretty good at making those kind of funny faces. I'm telling you, the crap's about to hit the fan. So 390, I found an, I made an image of crap hitting the fan, which is, again, something you can do fairly easily with AI imagery, which you couldn't do before. That's because I'm, I'm going to throw the crap at the fan. So then I got an image of someone throwing crap at the fan. So this guy's throwing crap at the fan. And so then I've got, uh, but seriously, you know, the old saying, uh, when the going gets tough, so I've got Biden here, the tough needs to get the going's creepy hands off of them. So Biden's going downhill. So I've got images in my mind. I was thinking he's riding a bike falling down because there's a famous image of him falling down on bikes. And then I can put Joe Biden's head on this guy that's falling down as he goes down a hill, right? And then, and then I was thinking I can put Trump uh, in a prison cell. So he's got the going gets tough. The tough Trump needs to get the going hands off him before the going puts Trump behind bars or worse, the going hits everybody and drags us all down into the ground, right? It's kind of a despair, uh, not, you know, but that's, that was the, that was the scenario. Again, this has less of like a punch, a setup and a punch setup and more of kind of a story premise setup to it. But that was my thought process through, you know, putting that together. And then next time or at some point, maybe the next step would be now I have everything lined up and I can just record this and then layer on top of it the images. And then I would layer on top of it the the uh, the memes and movie scripts.